stream is live. You ready? Julia Chang. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Nigel here, and today we're going to be celebrating Native American Heritage Month yet again with two Native American characters from Tekken. First off, we got to talk about Julia. Now, Julia is probably, I think, yeah, she's my favorite Tekken, female character at least, not my favorite Tekken character. Because I always liked her design and stuff like that, but I never really used her as a kid because I was focused on other characters that I thought were cooler back in the day when I was a wee lad. But now, like, growing up, played Tekken 7, she came, I'm like, man, I was, I was really looking forward to her. And I played her, I enjoy her, I'm really good with her, so. Yeah, it's a, I, I like her design. Uh, her story is not like super crazy or anything, it's just like how she fights and her design mainly, to be honest. But yeah, I think overall she's a really good character that is, I want to say a fan favorite, because she was a part of the new, you know, uh, new next generation with Jen and Xiao Yu and Eddie and all them, so yeah. I think she's a really cool character. But we can't mention Julia without mentioning her mom, the one who started it off for how she fights, which is Michelle Chang. Now I have no real attachment to Michelle Chang because I never really grew up with other character at all and she's only been in technically three games which is a no four games which is two tag games and one and two but i do like her design very much in her fighting style because it's just julia's but slightly different because she has her own moves and julia adds a little bit to her but she's not a bad character overall her story makes a lot of sense but she does a few dumb things i will say but overall not a bad character now enough talk let's get to the story of these two characters now this is from the manual from Tekken 1, and this just tells you the story of the character. It's not all the details, I'll tell the rest after I'm done reading it. But the story of Michelle Chang is that the Wandering Fighter is the daughter of a Native American woman and a Hong Kong man sent by Heiachi Mishima to find an ancient treasure on Native American land. Eventually on her 18th birthday, she heard from her mother that her father had been killed by Heiachi's men. She's taking part in the tournament to take revenge on the Mishimas. So that is her story, but what they did not include is that Michelle Cheng's father abandoned this quest for native treasure and actually went out with, you know, Michelle Cheng's mom. So that's why Heihachi killed him. Because I think there's a misconception that um, she was an archaeologist and that um, she was sent to America, but I think that's wrong actually. I think it's the other way around. I think her dad did, and that's why he got killed, which makes more sense with the story. But if I'm wrong, you can let me know down below, but it seems like this makes the most sense to me at least. Yeah, she would enter the tournament, try to fight people, but at the end of the day, we already know who won the tournament. It was Kazuya Mishima who took the dub. So unfortunately for her, she did not get to take revenge. But an interesting thing did occur during the tournament is that Koni Mitsu surprise attacked her and was very interested in the amulet that she had on her, which deals to other character stuff later down the line. I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but that is pretty much the end of the story for the first game. She just returns home and, you know, just hangs out with her mom in Arizona, essentially. Now, in the events of Tekken 2, um, Kazuya somehow, I don't know how he knew, but he found out about this amulet and was very in interested in it and wanted to steal it. So, what he did was, he kidnapped her mom, and um, obviously someone would be very fierce about that, so she entered the tournament immediately to get her mom back. And because Kazuya was using that of leverage, to, hey, give me the amulet, I'll give your mom back. That's essentially what he did. Now, um, what happened was, during the tournament, some part, and I'm not sure how far she got, but she fought Ganryu. Now, the thing you need to know about Ganryu is that he is working for Kazuya Mishima at the time, so he's his bodyguard, essentially, and um, he was supposed to capture Michelle Chang. But he ended up actually very much liking her and falling head over heels for her, so I'm not sure how what the results of the fight was. I'm not sure if he let her go or, or she beat him or what, but nothing happened essentially and then kept proceeding through the tournament she didn't win obviously considering what happens you know with the mishima family but she does end up actually saving her mom and keeping the amulet at the end of the day so that is good on her but on her way i guess home or not sure when but she does find 
a abandoned baby girl in a native settlement who she begins to adopt. And we come to find out that is Julia Chang. Who would have thought? And that is essentially the end of Tekken 2. Now this will be the last time you ever get to play as Michelle Chang in the main series because after that it's just Tekken Tag 1 and 2. Unless they add her an 8 which would be kind of crazy but I don't think they're going to do that. Okay, so Tekken 3 is the game where Julia Chang is finally introduced uh, in the series. This is her first time. And she has been trained by her mother in her martial arts, which I didn't name the martial arts, but I think it's called... Oh, it's actually two. Um, it is Kenpo and Jing Yi Quan. I think that's how you pronounce it. But I'm also getting... To, I, I'm, I'm getting Jing Yi Quan and Baji Quan. I think it is Baji Quan with Jing Yi Quan because I'm looking at the moves and it's more exactly her fighting style, Baji Quan is, because it's using more elbow. Just kind of like a Kira, if anybody knows a Kira from Virtual Fire, it's like that. So I think that's right. I, I think it's not Kimpo with Jing Yi Quan, just to make sure. Unless Kimpo is like Baji Quan is part of Kimpo, I don't know. But just to let you know. Now back to the story. Um, Julia Chang has had a relatively very good life. She's been, you know, raised by Michelle Chang and taught by her, her martial arts. So, uh, especially like just going over the character of Michelle Chang, she's a very caring person. So she's had a good life. Now, she did hear rumors in her tribe. Not sure the name of the tribe. They never really talk about that. But that there's going to be like some warrior, some god of fighting that just appears out of nowhere. and It's going to start doing some stuff. At first, she didn't believe all that madness. But then... Michelle Chang decided to go see Heihachi. I don't know why. And she also brought the amulet with her. To ask more about it and see what was going on. Obviously, what happened was Heihachi kidnapped her. And then he proceeded to use the amulet to wake up this god of fighting, which we all know is Ogre. And then once that happened, Ogre started going crazy. He started killing mentors such as the first king. Um, he severely injured people too, like Biak. Biak was incapacitated. So a lot of bad stuff happened. And obviously Julia was just surprised about them. And I was like, I can't believe this is real. And then, you know, she's like, man, now I got to go save my mom. So she entered the tournament, started fighting people to go save her mom. She doesn't win, obviously, because, you know, Jen wins and beats Ogre. But yeah, she does end up finding her mom and saving her. And then, you know, she was going to try to get revenge on Heihachi or something, but Michelle Chang said, no, let's not do that. I didn't raise you to be a killer or anything like that. I raised you to just use that for defense and stuff like that. And she didn't take revenge on Heihachi and they went back to Arizona to live a happy life, essentially. This is the last time you'll see her, Michelle Chang at least, in the main story ever. Because, like I said before, tag one, tag two, essentially. You have conquered Ogre. Now, the key to control Ogre is this pendant. It was all Heihachi's evil plot. I'll never let Heihachi get away with this. No, Julia, wait. Julia, hatred is not the answer. Do you remember why I taught you the powers to fight? It was to protect Mother Earth, not to destroy. Now let's go home, back to Arizona, where the land awaits us. Now we're moving on to Tekken 4. So in Tekken 4, Julia decides to actually go to college because her homeland is starting to become a desert. So she becomes an archaeologist to learn more about ecosystem restoration. And she actually partners with G Corporation at the time and to get more research about it to figure out a way to stop this. But the thing was, all the data was at their maximum security site. So when the little, the little beginning of Tekken for the opening happens, which is uh, Heihachi sends people, sends his goons, Mishima Zaibatsu, to attack Kazuya. They actually end up, I believe, taking that information and stealing it. So she's trying to find a way to get it back. Now, obviously, Heihachi wasn't targeting her or anything. It was just like her files were mixed in with other deep corporation important stuff. So that that's why they got stolen it wasn't just because you know julie tang enemy or whatever but yeah so obviously she's going to try to enter the tournament to get them back <laughs>
Now, fortunately for her, she was unable to get him back in Tekken 4, so that's kind of just it, really. She doesn't get him back, but she does try to continue her work still without it, and she actually has made some good progress. And that is the end for Tekken 4. Moving on to Tekken 5. Now, at this point, this is where stories start to not be as important unless you're like a Mishima or something like that, but in Tekken 5, Julia is doing, still doing her research for Ecosystem Reforestation, and so far she's doing good, but she really needed those uh, files that she had from G Corporation, so she enters the tournament to try to find the files and get them back. Now during all, most of her fights, she actually encounters Ganryu, and Ganryu proceeds to um... Sir, could you stop babbling so we can get this over with? Okay. Round one. Fight. Act really simpy, and then she's like, bro, can we just fight? And then they fight, and then I'm pretty sure she wins, and then that is pretty much it. That's pretty much the end of Tekken 5. She does manage to get her files back, don't know how, but she does, and obviously she doesn't win the tournament, Jen does, and that is the end of Tekken 5 for her. Now, Tekken 6. So, essentially, Julia is done what she's needed to do, honestly. She kind of has everything set in stone that she's gonna, you know, fix her land and stuff like that. But, one of the, I believe, one of, like, an, one of the elders of the tribe tell her, like, Hey, um, don't let Jin and Kazuya fight, because if that happens, something bad is really gonna happen. And that's pretty much why she enters the tournament to not let whatever this bad thing happens, which is Azazel or Azazel, that Anubis dude. I don't, I don't remember his how to say his name properly, but yeah. Unless, well then, because Jin and Kazuya don't fight, so I'm not sure if that was the the bad thing or is it something in Tekken Eight or I don't know. But I'm pretty sure it was him essentially. And that is about it for Julia in Tekken 6. That was, that was pretty quick, huh? Very, very quick. Because she didn't do anything that game. It was, that was the Lars game, so. Yeah. So, that is the end of Tekken 6. Now, moving on to Tekken 7. Specifically DLC, because we did not get Julia for a minute. And there's not really much story to talk about here either. So this is going to be super short. Now, the news about Julia is that... She became either a Twitch streamer or a YouTuber. I don't know what's in that universe, but yeah. And to to um, get money and use it to, you know, restore her land. 
and that is about it. Um, yeah. Well, actually, there's one thing. There's one thing. Because this is, I think this is actually canon, which is really weird. Um, so from Tekken Tag 2, there's this other version of her called JC. Because she was not in the game. Well, she is, but she goes by a different alibi. She becomes a luchador. Because the person wearing the mask, I'm not sure if they couldn't fight or whatever, but she put on the mask and proceeded to beat people up. And she was doing good. So she had like a hybrid version of her moveset, but also her moveset was really, really weird. It was cool, though. But yeah, this happened uh, before Tekken 7, so this is just like a little thing, I guess a bonus, because Tekken 7 thing is not too long. But yeah, she decided to quit being a luchador, I'm not sure if because it was bored or some other reason, but after that she just continued her work for the uh, reforestation plan for her native land. And that is about the end of Julia and Michelle Chang. Unfortunately, their stories are not too big compared to other characters that actually deal with the Mishimas, because they deal with them very little compared to like another bigger character I would consider, which would be Eddie Gordo, who definitely would deal with them more considering his story, but I'm not going to go over that. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I tried to not make it super long this time around because the last one was 30 minutes and I went over stuff that I necessarily didn't have to, but that would be good. But I'm, I'm not making like a remaster, like I said, of the KI thing. I'm not sure or not, but I do hope you guys enjoyed this video and just have a good rest of your day and... I guess I will see you guys next time on the next Native American Heritage Month video. So have a good rest of your day, night, or whatever you're doing, and yeah, I will see you guys later.